Hey everyone, it's Peter from Argo uh, with an update. We just put an RNS out uh, with a few interesting things in it. One was our, our May numbers, uh, and two was a, an update on uh, our relationship with Epic. We just signed a, a, a new deal with them to have them build our, our machines that are gonna be built with, with the Intel chips. So I'll get into that in a minute. But first, wanted to just go through the numbers for May. Obviously not a great month for us in terms of our overall Bitcoin mine. We mined 124 Bitcoin down from 166 in April. I'm gonna walk you through some of the reasons why we mined less Bitcoin um, than we wanted to this, this past, past month, uh, than we were expecting to, than, than a lot of our shareholders were expecting to. Um, mining margin was also lower. It was down to 62%. Um, and a big part of that obviously is the price of Bitcoin, but there's some other factors as well. So I'm gonna walk you through some of those factors in a minute. Um, we also sold some Bitcoin this month. So we have on our balance sheet uh, just under 2,400 Bitcoin down from 2,700 Bitcoin. Again, that's to fund our growth. As I've been saying over the last couple of updates that we've been giving to the market, um, you know, that's a lever that we're gonna pull on this year. Uh, and we've done some of that uh, uh, through, through the month of May. Um, in terms of uh, why did we mine 40 less Bitcoin this month than, than we did in the month of April, there's essentially four factors. I'm gonna walk you through those. The first is that difficulty went up. Um, it did come down at the end of the month, but that didn't have an, didn't have an impact on our, our mining numbers. That will have an impact uh, in June, but wouldn't have an impact in, in May. Uh, but difficulty did go up twice uh, right at the start of the month and then in the middle of the month. So that had an impact roughly about 10 Bitcoin less. Uh, you know, if you think about 40 less than April, about 10 of that was, was difficulty. So the second factor actually had to do with TerraPool, and it was the biggest factor. We mined about probably about 20 less Bitcoin than the month of April because of uh, essentially luck from the pool. So when you are participating in a pool um, that, you know, it's a smaller pool that you are putting your hash rate out on uh, and you're not participating in one of the bigger pools where they pay you based on your hash rate, not based on how many blocks they've won. Uh, you're exposed to essentially chance, to essentially luck. H how often are you able to s solve those puzzles? In the past, we've had pretty good fortune. This past month, we had pretty bad luck. Um, we weren't able to solve. We had a couple couple dry spells where we didn't hit very many blocks. So um, that led to, to, to less Bitcoin uh, rewards, le less Bitcoin block rewards. So we are currently reevaluating our relationship with TerraPool. Uh, obviously, we've been building it out with DMG for the past few quarters. Uh, and we'll update the market as we have uh, more things to say about, about our relationship with TerraPool. Uh, but clearly, we need to make sure that we are having consistent uh, uh, Bitcoin uh, rewards coming from whatever pool we're using. Uh, last two factors were, uh, in terms of why we mined less Bitcoin, was there was higher temperatures in Texas uh, for the month of May. Uh, and so we curtailed, we voluntarily curtailed a couple times. Energy prices went up. We gave that power back to the grid. Uh, and that, that happened on a couple occasions. Uh, and then lastly, uh, there was a few, and that, that was probably worth about five Bitcoin uh, in terms of higher temperatures, that, that self curtailment. Uh, and then the last piece is we had a few kinks, um, uh, particularly with some pump issues that we had. This is kind of to be expected with a new facility. So we had some downtime um, in, in a couple different occasions for the new facility at Helios. So those kinks are being worked out. We're expecting June to be a much better month than, than the month of May uh, and to get back to you know, where we were for the month of April or beyond that. Um, in terms of our overall installation progress, we've made really good progress. The team on the ground is, is doing an excellent job. Um, we've installed the 2,500 machines as per the agreement with Core for the rig swap. So that's happened. Those have been uh, swapped out. That hash rate's been swapped out to Core. We have uh, the second part uh, and then the third and the fourth part of that uh, uh, coming. Um, and then we've also got um, the rigs that are coming from Bitmain, you know, roughly 3,000 a month for the next few months. Those are also being installed. So uh, we've put that first order from Bitmain in. Th that installation progress is going well. We are installing roughly 200 to 250 or, or bringing online because it's not just installing, but it's also, you know, making sure that they're hashing. 200 to 250 machines a day. If you think about over the course of the month, that's about the rate of installation that we have going. Um, so that means at the end of May, our overall hash rate capacity uh, is 1.9 exahash. So that's an increase of 300 petahash or roughly 3,000 machines um, for the month of May uh, where we're currently at. 
All right, a little bit about the uh, deal that we signed with Epic. So um, those of you that follow the company closely will know that going back to, to early 2021, we've had a relationship with Epic. They're a Canadian manufacturer, uh, have a great track record, record in technology, have been making machines mostly in the altcoin space for the last few years. Um, we had a, a priority supply agreement with them going back, as I said, to the first quarter of 2021. Um, some of that uh, agreement is now spinning into this next relationship we have. We are taking the Intel chips that are coming from Intel and we're working closely uh, with their team in Toronto to design and then manufacture um, our custom ASIC miner. And those are, are machines are designed specifically for immersion. Um, think about it as, as the difference between having, you know, a MacBook Pro, which arrives, you know, fully set and, and kind of like you can't really do a lot with it. You know, you have to use it the way Apple intended versus, you know, a Dell um, where you can customize it, you can optimize it. So we're working with, with uh, both Intel and with Epic to basically build our own custom immersion machines. It's, it's a game changer for us. Uh, on the one side, you know, there's the economics of it. It's it's, it's cheaper on a do dollar per terahash basis. But then, then on the other hand, it allows Perry and the technology team um, to to really get more out of those machines, to be able to overclock them, underclock them, uh, just have more granular control. Uh, and as I think everyone knows, you know, we pride ourselves on our skill as a miner, uh, on our ability to to really optimize machines, and and particularly now to optimize them in an immersion environment. So working with, with Epic will allow us to do that. Perry has a great relationship with their team. Uh, their CTO, Earl, is, is a very smart guy and has been in the space for a long time. So we're excited about that. Um, it's been in the works for a while. It's nice to be able to announce it um, and it's, it's good news for us. Um, and in terms of the, the mechanics of that, so the machines are gonna be manufactured over the summer uh, and with deliveries will start in September. And then as we said on our last update, those machines will be start to be installed uh, you know, late Q3, early Q4 is the plan um, to have them uh, up and running at Helios. All right, a couple other pieces. Uh, I was in New York last week for the Davidson conference. It's a small investment bank. Uh, they had a mining conference. Just a couple kind of thoughts about the market right now. Obviously, the, the macro environment is, is pretty tough uh, and expected, you know, to continue to be choppy, at least for the next couple of months. Um, our plan is to continue to execute, to show the market that when we say we're going to do something, we've done it. Uh, we have lots of good feedback for, for us getting Helios online, lots of credibility that we've built in the space for being able to do that, to be able to spin up our own facility in the, in the time frame that we did. Um, there's lots of other players in the space who are having issues getting infrastructure online on time. So we're very proud of the work that we've done. Um, and to be in Texas, obviously, this is still a great state to be in and, and lots of talk about, about Texas and lots of interest in Intel. Uh, and the relationship, a lot of people are really feeling like that's going to you know, have a big impact long term on the mining space and particularly, obviously, on the, on the technology side. So um, the one other piece is that you know, there, there is expected to be lots of demand for debt for the second half of this year, given where the equity markets are at. You know, who's going to get that debt, who's in line for it. And the general feeling is miners that have a track record that have been listed for a long time, that have good relationships with manufacturers that show they are executing are going to be the kind of folks who are who are in line for, for debt to fund their growth. Newer miners who are, who are either recently public or still trying to go public are going to have a harder time. And so the general feeling is that there's going to be you know, some consolidation in the space as things get tougher for some miners. Um, so I, I'm not saying one, one way or the other in terms of, you know, how, how we're, we're feeling other than we obviously feel like we are a quality producer, quality um, miner. And, uh, and so, you know, as I said on, on the last update, we need 50 million in capital for the second half of this year to, to fund the, the Intel machines and to finish a little bit uh, of the Bitmain rigs. Uh, and, and we don't see any issues with being able to get that funding. All right. Um, any other updates. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, last thing is I'm going to be back to Helios this week um, to, uh, to, to meet with the team. We have some analysts who are coming from uh, mostly from the United States to, to do, do, do a tour of the facility. Um, so maybe I'll send a, a couple of social media pieces or a couple photos out on social media. Um, always great to be back in Texas. And so I'm looking forward to be there. And then the week will end with the consensus um, conference in Austin is one of the biggest conferences of the year. Really lots of people there. 
Um, so, you know, always lots going on. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, onwards and upwards.